Thanks for staying with us. I'm Chris Wallace in tonight for Bill O'Reilly, and we continue now with our post-game coverage of last night's big GOP debate. Joining me now from Spartanburg, South Carolina, Governor Mike Huckabee. Governor, I want to play this exchange for you from last night. Governor Huckabee, like Governor Walker, you have staked out strong positions on social issues. You favor a constitutional amendment banning same-sex marriages. You favor a constitutional amendment banning abortions, except for the life of the mother. How do you persuade enough independents and Democrats to get elected in 2016? A lot of people are talking about defunding Planned Parenthood as if that's a huge game changer. I think it's time to do something even more bold. I think the next president ought to invoke the 5th and 14th amendments to the Constitution. Now that we clearly know that that baby inside the mother's womb is a person at the moment of conception. Governor Huckabee, welcome to The Factor. You're taking some heat for that answer, and I want to clarify. Are you saying that the Supreme Court's ruling in Roe v. Wade was wrong and you would support bringing a new case to the court? Or are you saying as president that you would move on your own under your view of the Constitution to outlaw abortion? Chris, what I'm saying is the Fifth Amendment guarantees due process before you can deprive someone of life or liberty. The Fourteenth Amendment guarantees that a person has equal protection under the law. The real question here is not Roe v. Wade. The question, Hood, or the question is, is that a person? Is that unborn child a human being? Because if it is, that human being has constitutional rights, and Roe v. Wade is wrong. Roe v. Wade was based on something that's not in the Constitution, based on the notion that privacy gave people an unlimited access to unlimited abortion. But, but Governor, and I don't mean to interrupt, I guess what I'm asking you is, I mean, I understand your point of view. The question is, is that an argument you would make before the court and let them decide? Or are you saying as president, you might move on your own? I think the president should move, not so much on his own, he should move on the Constitution. This is not an ex-cathedra action. This is a realization that the Supreme Court got it wrong. And they got it wrong, and the first priority ought to be to uphold the constitutional rights of every person. This is not unlike what Abraham Lincoln did in, 18, or in the early 1860s in response to the 1857 Dred Scott decision that said that black people weren't fully human. Nobody defends that today. Nobody. And I think that the time has come for us to act like a civilized people, not a people that savagely tear the limbs off an unborn child, sell the parts, and pretend that somehow that's the mark of a civilized culture and society. So, so, so how would you as president do that? I mean, you would outlaw abortion? It's not that you outlaw it. You, you defend the rights of the unborn. So it's not what you say you're not going to do, it's what you say you are going to do. You're going to defend the rights of every person, and the issue again is personhood. So look, I know what would happen. Immediately there would be a lawsuit filed, there would be an attempt to create an injunction. At that point, I think Congress would perhaps step in and say, well, let's decide. Let's, let's decide if there's going to be a law that is passed by the people's elected representatives. But what we need to do is to begin arguing from the standpoint of protecting individuals rather than from the standpoint of destroying individual lives and then trying to, f to figure it out later. I think the pro-life uh, movement has, has played defense too long. We know so much more biologically and scientifically about the origins of life than the Supreme Court knew in 1973. Governor. And one of the justices deciding that case even admitted that if we ever realized or believed that that was a person, not just a blob of tissue, it would change the whole debate. Governor, I, I, we've got about a minute left. I want to quickly change subjects on you. You also got into a dust-up with New Jersey Governor Chris Christie over entitlements. He basically says that your math doesn't work uh, and you can't save entitlements like Medicare and Social Security without raising the retirement age and cutting some benefits for higher income recipients. Well, I think uh, Governor Christie is a good guy, and I understand where he's coming from. 
but the people who are the recipients of Medicare and Social Security, they aren't the ones who screwed this up. The government did. And here's another example where the government screws something up and wants to put the burden of it and the problem and the impact of it off on people whose paychecks have been confiscated for every time they ever got a paycheck. That's just fundamentally wrong, Chris. And so if we're going to fix this, let's fix it in a way that doesn't punish people by the way, 60 million Americans get Social Security, and a third of them depend on it for 90% of their income. I just yep. don't think that that's a realistic or even a, uh, an appropriate way to deal with a problem that the government made, not the people who paid in money for all the years of their working life. Governor Huckabee, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much, and safe travels on the campaign trail, sir. Thank you, Chris. Good to talk to you. Straight ahead, the big winners and losers in last night's debate, our expert analysis moments away.